Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about CineStill 50D. It's a 35 millimeter color negative film. I also want to say that it's not lost on me that I'm about to make a video about pretty pictures when there are many cities in America that are still smoldering. Um, I actually made a video kind of addressing it and then it just didn't feel right to post on a YouTube channel like this that's such small potatoes, you know, just a little over 100 subscribers. You know, I'm very active, I'm political, it's all on my other social media and stuff like that, and I just decided I didn't want to seem like I was trying to get views for talking about it. I held off a few days on making videos at all. Um, it doesn't feel totally right to even come back on now, but I don't know when it's going to feel right again. So I don't know if you have an opinion on should we hold off on posting stuff like this for now. You could let me know down below, I don't mind. Um, but what I do when stuff is a little crazy and I'm dealing with it like everyone all the time, um, I ride my bike, I take photos and I make videos and that's my escape and it's also not lost on me that I have the benefit of being able to have an escape that I am not right in the heart of these issues right now. Anyways, I'm gonna still go ahead and jump on into this roll of film. Uh, Cine Still 50D is actually a motion picture film. It's Kodak Vision 3 film. Uh, 50D means it's 50 ISO and it's daylight balanced. What Cine Still does is they take it, they cut it down so it could fit into cameras. They do 35 and 120. And then they remove what's called a remjet layer. A remjet layer is on motion picture films and it helps the film move through the uh, movie camera, basically. Then it also acts as an anti-halation layer. And what that really means is it keeps the light from bouncing off the back of the pressure plate and coming back onto the film. Uh, since it is removed in um, Cine Stills version of the film, you could actually use it kind of to a haloing effect. You'll see it in some of these images. We'll talk about it a little more. Um, since they take the remjet layer off, it can also be developed as C41, which is the regular color you know, negative process. It would normally be developed as ECN2, which has a step that removes the remjet layer. And it's slightly different, so I haven't been able to find any examples. Um, I know there's movies shot on this film, but of still images side by side compared to the C41 and ECN2. Uh, I saw some people said that it lowers the contrast and it could throw the colors a little bit. You know, all I have is the one example to deal with and we'll talk about that as we get into this more. So I was out at Old Trail School, as I've said in a lot of these videos, I was volunteering at the farmer's markets every week with their drive up program because of the other crisis we're in right now. And uh, it was a really foggy morning. We got there early because my girlfriend helps run those markets. And so I went for a walk and I kind of did a little photo essay of this private school and the little farm that goes with it. So this first shot is where they just have some raised beds and the green and a lot of these shots did have like even more of a greenish almost bluish cast to them and I did correct a little bit and I saw a lot of people saying that they had to do some color correction with this film but you know it was pretty minor and I was pretty happy with the results. This next one with the blue handle and the red tree in the background, I thought it just, you know, gonna try a new color film, should shoot some colors, and that blue handle of that little pump there just, you know, really jumped out at me. I really like the um, wide aperture too with everything else thrown out of focus. Simple shots like this have always been something I've enjoyed taking and I like. These are some of the greenhouses, and you can see how foggy it was that morning. I did have, and here's another shot of the greenhouses with this little yellow flag in front. And I'll show one here where I can't figure out what was going on. I had all these weird artifacts, these rainbowy. y I think my scanner rendered them as the rainbowy thing because I looked through the loop on the light table and I could see little, you know, black spots and stuff like that, but I'm not sure if they're from, you know, the remjet layer removal process wasn't perfect or when they handled the film or if my lab didn't do that great of a job on the processing and they got it kind of dirty and I'm not sure and if anyone has seen this kind of thing I would love to hear um, what they know or believe it is. My roll of Cine Still 50D is an earlier roll. It doesn't have the DX coating and I actually don't know when I bought it and they mentioned more artifacts um, coming about as the film aged especially with the early version so I don't remember when I got it. I think I threw it on an order from something I was ordering online a long time ago so I can't you know claim anything about the film or my processing yet until I, you know, nail it down a little more. So this is another one here. This is where they're planting the um, farm, the beds, and you can see how they have it mulched and I just like the stripes of color and then the yellow caution tape in front. Just a lot of color for testing out a color film again. 
same thing with this. It was the idea. I saw these, you know, this red wheelbarrows, red uh, rototillers, just leaning up against the shed. Just kind of a cool classic style shot to see what the colors look like. This one really didn't take that much color correction to look really good. I do like, the, you know, the muted contrast kind of of this film. Obviously, a lot of this is fairly low contrast scenes. Uh, this that same shed, just looking a little farther over with the. Um, you know, barn art, quilt art on the side. Uh, the staircase, I've shot in black and white a lot, but I really do like the color they painted and it's faded. If you look at the top of this too, you could see some of that effects of not having the anti-halation layer where it starts to get that little haloing effect, like the orangey effect. And then it's looking down the other way. Again, I just think these steps are kind of cool. And I didn't color correct this one quite as much. I thought the, that kind of bluish dreamy look really worked with the fog and the colors in this. Here's up by the um, farm again. You can see the barn in the background and the fog, the fence and leading lines and all that kind of thing. I just like it. And this little herb garden with the bricks, this little brick spiral type. And you can see that around the oregano sign. That's part of the uh, halation effect. And this old school bus up here, again, hitting the colors. And the halation there is really stands out along the trees. You can see all that kind of you know, the barns in the shed and the fence another classic style shot. I just love this fog. It made for such a cool little cool morning to run around and shoot in. I'm looking down the street with the two barns from the other side and I, this fence is just so cool and that leading line and the yellow sign with the arrow. This was one of my favorite shots just with these weeds in the front and the barn and the um, old house or garage in the background. Another cool fence shot. Uh, something that I always kind of have liked doing. I shot actually my first roll of color film when I got back into um, film photography, however long ago that was, 10 years ago or something here. That was with a Minolta SRT 101, and I can't even remember what the color film I was shooting at the time was. Some school buses, kind of another color check. I've always liked series of things too. When I see stuff in a row, it's always drawn my eye. So I took a couple shots at Aaron's. I just really like the shadow with the wildflowers she has growing there. And this is one of my friend Mike's sculptures. I've talked about how I've been going around shooting all his sculpture installations, installations for him around town. And whenever I've had my film camera on me, I've been pulling, out, pulling it out and taking a shot like that too. So for the last part of this role, um, I shot it on a bike camping trip. Me and a couple friends went on. We went out to a farm in Seville, which is in Medina County. And I finished the role shooting out there. This one came out, my scanner has this tendency to go super purple when a shot is um, exposed wrong. And I believe it's the scanner, because looking at the film, it doesn't seem to look like that, though I'm not an expert at looking at color negatives. But this one's fully color corrected. And here you can see what it looks like when it hasn't been corrected at all. They say this film is really great at rendering skin tones. Uh, I've heard some people say they like it better than Kodak Portra. I didn't know that before I shot it, and I didn't take a ton of people shots, but here you could you know, judge for yourself. Yeah, this is just us relaxing when we first got there. Brad taking a sip of beer, unwinding. Same thing, just another shot, our bikes. We had them all loaded down, and there was a lot of climbing on this trip, so it was tiring. But I only brought the film camera and my GoPro. Same, just more of the, the scene as we got there. Out of focus, again, that rangefinder focusing, just still, I miss it sometimes when there's not a defined line. Ben and uh, the farm doggo and his bike. And this is the last shot on the roll. It was just so pretty with the pond and the reflection. And then I shot another roll of T-Max out here after this. It, this is the highest point in the area, in the town, in the township, I believe. And so the sun, you just get this awesome light because you could see the sun setting for so long. So I developed and scanned that film. I have not edited it at all yet, but I will be showing that one in a video coming down the road. So yeah, all in all, I am pretty I'm pretty happy with this film. I would definitely try it again. I would like to try a newer version of it. I would like to find out what these effects that I'm showing here now are and why I got them and where they came from. But yeah, all in all, I would definitely shoot it again. I would, I would be interested in doing that, but it is not cheap. It's 13 bucks a roll. So 13 bucks for a 36 exposure roll. I think this would be another fil film that would be cool to shoot in 120. I still prefer my black and white films and I still prefer shooting color digitally, but you know, with film emulsions like this coming out, just different interesting things to try. I always like trying a new thing with color at least once or twice. So. so that's all for now. My next few videos will be biking videos. I am going bike camping again this weekend, so I'll probably try and document that as well. But um, yeah, I hope everyone's staying safe. Everyone is doing the best they can in these pretty wild times. I will see you next time.